In what ways does our media product use, develop and challenge forms and conventions of real media products? We used codes and conventions from the documentary Super Size Me as we thought it was a suitable documentary to base our documentary on due to it both being about health. We decided to base our documentary around Super Size Me as it linked well with the initial ideas we came up with for our project. This was health and fitness and how obesity affects people's lives. We used voiceovers in order to interpret meanings to the reader and also so it's not tedious to a viewer if they are having to read the information off the screen. We used titles to draw in viewers. We needed to ensure that they stood out in order to appeal to an audience. The title needs to be catchy in order to remember it and link to the content of the documentary. We used interviews using various experts to gather a professional opinion on health and fitness in Tamworth and how obesity is affecting Tamworth. We used graphics within the interview, a text banner at the bottom of the screen, stating the name and position of who was being interviewed. This was used to inform the audience who was being interviewed. We used a montage of images showing the gym and all the fatty foods there was causing obesity. Me and Claudia Zane when developing the main product and the auxiliary text for them was to keep all of the text connected to each other. In order to make sure all of them were linked through their designs and target audience, we tried to break our product down into categories, first being the colours used. Through the auxiliary tasks, we use warm colours such as orange, yellow and red. These were our choice because unhealthy food is what makes the connection between the documentary, the auxiliary text and what the documentary is based around, obesity. Warm colours are linked with being comforting colours and as fatty foods and sweet foods are classed as being comforting food. This was the reason behind choosing to use warm colours. The font used in our main product and the auxiliary text was a clever choice of font. This is because our documentary aims itself at more than just adults. Obesity is a growing issue worldwide and everybody has the possibility to become a victim of it. So instead of having a serious font such as Ariel or Times New Roman, which would be good if the documentary was aimed at just adults, but because the target audience is aimed at everybody, we needed to pick something that ticked all the boxes. So a fun looking font was our final choice. The images used in the main product and auxiliary text vary slightly with the A3 magazine article, having clip art of a burger in the background. I chose to use this clip art as mentioned before, the target audience isn't just adults. It's aimed at all ages, so I needed to cater for the lower age group by adding a user friendly image. The advert created by Claudia packs everything about the documentary into one advertisement. The background is of the United Kingdom and the text saying Fat Britain is in large, bold and has the warm colour scheme mentioned earlier. The channel in which the documentary is going to be broadcasted on, BBC Two, is stated along with the date and the time at the bottom of the advertisement. I feel that we're able to successfully combine both the auxiliary text and the main product well in terms of design and content. We are very happy at the fact that by just viewing the auxiliary text, members of the audience who looked at the auxiliary before watching the documentary were able to make an assumption on what the documentary was about before it had even begun, showing the connection between all three texts worked well. As our group, we showed our documentary to a group of random people all within our target audience. We then asked their opinions on what they thought about our documentary and what could be improved on. The results from question one showed the success of the production in terms of following codes and conventions was good. Some of the students rated the production excellent and one student rated the production average showing that generally our production has been a success. From the evidence the 23 members of the audience saw, they believed that the blog was almost excellent with over half marks given to option two. Good. The six members believed that the blog was excellent. The audience was shown in detail the print artefacts and the playing of the production. The results showed that the production had some creative and imaginative elements within it. I feel the reason for the production having the majority of the audience writing some imagination is the fact 
that both me and my group member Chris decided to do a documentary on obesity and how Tamworth has been accused of being the most obese town in the UK. The aim of this documentary is to venture around Tamworth's town centre and shops to see if the accusation made by the Daily Mail is correct or just another incorrect newspaper statement. The shots we took for the documentary showed the same thing over and over, which was lots of shops and each shop, each shot would tell the audience what this shop sold. This became rather repetitive within our production as the majority of the shops in Tamworth were shops that sold sweets or fatty foods. To mix the documentary up a little bit, we didn't just talk about how people became obese by food, we talked about the facilities Tamworth offers in form of gymnasiums and fitness centres, had interviews with professional sportsmen and women and talked to some of the members within the Landai Forte Academy Tamworth 6 form and got their opinion on what they think. The purpose of doing this was to not only give a statement for the accusation made by the Daily Mail in form of showing the shops but a statement against the accusation made to show two sides of the story. The purpose of doing all this was to give not only a statement for the accusation made by the Daily Mail in form of showing the shops but a statement against the accusation made to show two sides of the story. This is why I feel we're awarded some imagination and not really anything below. The majority of the audience voted for option two, which was good. This shows that our production contained good shot composition, which was important as this documentary required accurate shots and data so it could attempt to answer whether Tamworth is the fattest town in the UK. Because Claudia was our presenter, she had to dress like somebody you would see on TV. She decided to dress up in a suit as this would make her look professional and would help to make the documentary convincing. <laughs> to ensure the documentary is fully convincing, we could not only have to dress appropriately for the documentary, but Claudia had to sound enthusiastic in her voice and body language. All this combined together would make the documentary convincing enough for the audience to believe it was a real documentary on BBC Two. When creating the documentary first time round, one anonymous member of the audience said that some of the cuts take away sound. These clips could be extended. Looking back over our production, we saw that numerous segments within the documentary cut the sound out at the end of one part. This happened when an interview was taking place which prevented the audience from hearing the last words from the personal assistant talking about the effects on obesity. To avoid this, I could have faded out the sound slightly to begin with and then fade in the sound for the next scene. This would make for a smoother transition between scenes. Keep the font similar throughout. Change is too much in parts. For example, in the middle of something important, the font will change. This is a response from another anonymous member. When I went back over the production, there was multiple times where the font changed during an important interview or facts being shown on screen. This is another minor mistake. To alter this, we could have stuck to one font throughout the production. Ten out of the 23 members found that one of the interviews between Claudia, the presenter, and Jack Fian talking about his fitness and how he visits the gym every day to keep fit had been cut off near the end of the sentence, preventing the audience from hearing what Jack had to say. This is one of our major downfalls as we had no time left to get a proper interview with Jack and we had to cut the voice recording midway through the last bit of the sentence. Another problem which I and Chris found was the recording of the microphone. Nearing the end of the project we were making minor improvements to our production by adding voiceovers. However, one of the voiceovers had crackling in it, making it difficult to hear when we were talking. We were initially going to change it, however, we ran out of time and our short term solution was to cut out the crackling bit of the voice. However, this eliminated a lot of speech, so this was not an option. I changed the decibels to minus 10 to try and reduce the crackling noise. This was the best we could do as we ran out of time. Multiple members stated that a voiceover had crackling and they found it difficult to listen. How well do the print artefacts tie in with the main production in terms of code and conventions and style and creativity? 21 out of the 23 members stated that the print artefact worked well with the production. The A3 article 
fit well as it had the same colour scheme as the production and the advertisement was in great detail and informed the audience when and where the documentary would be on. The feedback from question 6 was brilliant and told me and Chris that our print artefacts were good enough for the audience to understand their purpose and how well they're linked with the production. One of the two members in our audience stated that they tie in very well but the magazine article looks more like a poster. This is understandable as I use clip art for one of the images which looks rather unprofessional as the image is cartoon. However, this is the only image that fits well with the content of our documentary. The other member stated that the advertisement didn't appeal because of the font of Fat Britain. The other A3 article was excellent. I feel that the Fat Britain text wasn't as professional as it could have been. And the documentary is being shown on BBC2, a channel known for serious documentaries. It goes against the documentary's codes and conventions. The software we use to create the production. Adobe Premiere Pro used to compile all the videos recorded into one composition. The good features about Premiere Pro was the timeline for monitoring what bits of footage, effects, etc. Wide variety of video transitions and effects and a wide var variety of music transitions and effects. Photoshop used to modify and create the images for the production. Audacity used to modify the sound in the production. Editing in Premiere Pro. To edit our videos we used Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is a timeline based video editing software application that is easy to use once we got used to it. The Adobe package also included Photoshop, a professional image edi editing piece of software that allowed you to create professional images. The tools that we used to create the project were the Sony HDR camera CX130E. This high definition camera was used to gather all the footage needed for the documentary. The IMAX were then used to copy all of the footage from the camera to the production. We then imported them all into Premiere Pro. When planning and researching our production, we used lots of different programs to help gain ideas for what our doc documentary would look like. The first place I went looking for ideas was Google. We got different people's perspectives on what a good documentary is because our production was aimed at being broadcasted on BBC Two, a TV, a TV channel renowned for serious documentaries. With this in mind, we decided that the best place to go on the internet was the BBC's own website, as they have a documentary on what makes a good documentary. After watching this, we gained the knowledge we needed to make a quality documentary. We used YouTube to watch some other documentaries and get a feel for, again, what makes a good documentary. We watched Super Size Me and found that this to be the most relevant documentary for us as it contained everything that our documentary was going to feature. Both me and Claudia critiqued the first couple of minutes of the documentary to better understand the conventions of the documentary. We used Microsoft Word, a word processing piece of software, to construct all of our ideas. These ideas range from creating the scripts for the documentary to putting our storyboard on there. Microsoft Word not, o not only allowed me and Chris to formulate ideas that we had come up with, also we used Word to present our storyboards in a nice way and it allowed us to print everything out that we needed to. As we came up with new ideas and plans, instead of putting them into a Word document, and leaving them, we were told that the best plan of action was to create a blogger account for our group and upload all the documents to the blogger account, making it available for us online. It was easier to modify and to add new posts at home. Blogger is a useful tool as we could embed pictures, documents and videos to show where we were getting our ideas and inspiration from. The layout of Blogger was almost like a diary. We would submit a document, image or video to our blog and then give the time and date it was published, give the tags to the blog making it easier to search for. The internet questionnaires and feedback and the research information that we gathered from numerous books played a vital role in the construction of our production. The media technologies in our production were used to create the final product. Blogger was used to present more coursework as it showed both Claudia and my own ability to use media technologies.